All right, so there you have your liver, all right? You have your right lobe, the larger one, the left lobe, the second largest one, the quadrate, you can see marked by the round ligament, the gallbladder, and the hydus or the helus of the liver. You notice the gallbladder has a fundus and a cistern, cystic duct. We have the left hepatic duct, the right hepatic duct, the common hepatic duct, and then we have the common bile duct. You can see when we have the uh, caudate lobe here coming up adjacent to the inferior vena cava, we have the remnants of the blood vessel that is now the ligamentum venosum, part of the ligamentum teres. On the front of the liver, there would have been the falsiform. They're coming as coronary ligaments on the top of the liver by the diaphragm and the round ligament. Those would be your main structures to worry about on that. Uh, on the intestinal villi, you can see you have villi. We have intestinal villi and intestinal crypts. We have a lacteal, which is a blind lymphatic vessel that collects uh, if you like uh, fats, we have a capillary plexus that collects amino acids and carbohydrates, simple sugars and disaccharides, and um, dipeptides and amino acids. Here we have the mucosa and we have the intestinal crypt or pit. So that means the intestine secretes and absorbs. Below it, we have uh, part, part of the mucosa that goes includes the muscularis mucosa. So the mucosa is everything down to the muscle of the mucosa. We then have the submucosa, which in this model, you have a submucosal plexus of blood vessels. The lavender would be those that would drain into the portal system via the mesenteric veins. And we have the mesenteric arteries. If we were in the duodenum, then this would have also had a lot of glandular material, commonly called Brunner's glands. We have the muscularis externa, which you can see has circular muscle and longitudinal. Don't go by the grain because from the side you can see here you have the circular and the longitudinal. It all depends how you cut. It. We also have uh, lymphatic vessels and then we have the submucosal plexus, there's nerve net here, and the myenteric plexus, there's nerve net there. So for these nets respond to stretching uh, of the intestine. So these are two separate nerve plexes? They're two plexes, often simply called enteric plexes. Okay. The odes are occubals plexes. All right, and then you have a poppy that has fallen on the floor. <laughs> no, we have what? We have the pancreas. It has a head, a body, and a tail. The head is in the arms of the duodenum. The body lies in the bed of the stomach and the tail passes to the spleen. So this is the spleen here. We have the adrenal glands, we have the kidneys, we have the duodenum with the circular plica. If we look more carefully, we can see we have the main pancreatic duct, that's this one. That would be also called Wersing's duct. We have the accessory or Santorini duct. We have the common bile duct joining the main pancreatic duct, Wersing's duct, passing through a muscle in this wall called the sphincter of Odi. Mm -hmm. It then goes into a swelling called an ampulla, the ampulla of butter, uh, also called the duodenal ampulla, hepatopancreatic ampulla, pancreohepatic ampulla, or multiple names. The old name would be the ampulla of butter, going finally through a, uh, basically a duodenal papilla. Those would be the main things on that. So we have the um, esophagus, the cardia, the fundus, the body, the pylorus. Uh, if we open it up, there's a rugae. Uh, the cardiac valve would be here. The pyloric sphincter is here, and you can see it as a true sphincter. How can you tell the orientation of the stomach? Uh, the greater curvature is down, the lesser curvature is up. Right, so the esophagus is coming in, more on the right side, fa facing toward the left. The fundus is on the left, the greater curvature is on the left, the pylorus is on the right. 
here we have an old dilapidated jaw. There's another jaw model too, but you can see we have the mandible, we have the dentition, which includes the two incisors, one canine, two premolars, three molars. You can see we have a submandibular salivary gland. We have um, the tooth itself, which would have a crown portion and then a root portion. The root is in the alveolar bone, okay, which would be this bone here. The actual apex of this root would go down to an apical foramen. He said get the tooth. Mm -hmm. All right, and that would be where the apical nerves go in there. Okay. All right. And even on this one, you can see you have enamel, dentin, cementum, and the apex of foramen. Uh, when we take this off, you can see the esophagus behind it. So there's your esophagus coming down. There's a diaphragm, a little bit of it here. Then you have the liver. This is the falciform ligament here. Beneath the liver, if we hold that out, you can see you have the gallbladder, which has got the fundus, the body, and the cystic duct. We have the round ligament, we have the quadrate uh, lobe, uh, the cystic duct is joining the hepatic ducts to make the common bile duct as a caudate lobe. We've done the stomach already, but you can also see here, besides the myenteric plexus, you can also see we have oblique muscle, circular muscle, then longitudinal muscle forming the muscularis externa. Uh, you can see the pancreas again here with the head of the pancreas and the body and the tail. The main pancreatic duct are Wersing's the accessory duct or Santorini joining the common bile duct. Uh, here we have the large intestine ascending colon. The pouches are holstrum. The white band is the longitudinal muscle known as the tinea coli. There should be two bands of that. Uh, we have the small intestine here. The easiest landmarks for the small intestine would be from the stomach. If we have the stomach there, we start off with the duodenum. It swings over to the spleen. By the time it gets to the spleen, it's been about, say, 18 inches. Now we're jejunum. Continue for about 24 inches or so. Then we become the ileum, which is the part that joins the large intestine. If we go to the large intestine, then you've got the ileum coming in and join, going to this part of the ascending codon called the cecum. This is where it would enter, therefore you'd have in this wall an ileocecal valve, which is marked by this slit here, that little slit there. Uh, coming off of this, there would have been a vermiform appendix, which in this model has been broken off, so he's had an appendectomy. Okay, uh, so that's your main ones on that. What are the, the sections of the, is that feces right here? Well, yes, it would probably be, in this area, it would be more likely to be green than brown, okay. okay, but they made it that way. It's usually sort of greenish in this color because of the bile. So this is the cecum? And, and this is the, so cecum, ascending colon, hepatic flexure, transverse colon, splenic flexure, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum. Okay. Now it is brown. <laughs> okay. So if we take this out, you can see the liver more clearly. And you can see the falciform rays here. There's a falciform ligament. There's a coronary ligament. Okay, you can see lobules within the liver, which is a little bit better. Again, this is a little more clear too. You've got the round ligament, the quadrate, fundus, body, and, and neck going to the cystic duct, becoming the common bile duct, the uh, right and left hepatic ducts. Then if you can, okay, thank you. If you continue down, you can see that when we open this, the rugae are more obvious. There's wow. a rugae of the stomach, the esophagus. This area of the stomach is the cardia, fundus, body, pylorus, pyloric sphincter. So that's a little bit better there. You can also see the muscles, longitudinal, circular, and obliques. Here's a little bit better with the Holstras, the pouches, 
the Tania coli oh, I see. coming off of it from the transverse colon draping down, actually draping from the greater curvature of the stomach. So if my hands are curvature of the stomach, there's the stomach is draping down off of the greater curvature. It's a greater omentum. The and greater omentum? Remember, the greater omentum is that vestige of the ventral mesentery. Oh, right, okay. okay. And the, the greater omentum and the lesser omentum are vestiges of that. So this is going to cushion the uh, intestines from shock. Right, so here we've got the uh, ilium, ileocecal valve, cecum, ependum or appendix, ascending colon, hepatic flexion, right, right up at the kidney, right, transverse colon, <laughs> and then splenic flexure, descending colon, sigmoid, rectum.